What's going on, y'all? So, Love and Hip Hop New York Season 6, Episode 4. What is this called? Let me look at my gag, because y'all know I'll be feeling. Whatever the fuck, it'll be in the title. I don't give a damn right about now. But, <laughs> ah, so the episode ends, well, it starts off where it ended last week. First of all, how y'all doing? Listen, my birthday is coming up on Thursday. And I just got a real, like, uh, I, I, I got this disgusting feeling that it's really going to be trash. And I will get into it, but I'm not going to get into it. But I don't want to put that, but I bet you just did. It's, like, shit just ain't really, you know, I said no complaining. So, bitch, suck that shit up. That's what I'm just going to do. Listen, I was at work, okay? I just got off work. Let me shut up. Let me, let me, let me. I'm trying to find a picture to upload on Instagram, right? I still haven't uploaded it. So I'm scrolling through my shit, right? And, you know, everybody got some nasty pictures. Not of myself. Girl, don't nobody want to see that. Everybody got some little nasty pictures, you know, that probably was sent to you or, you know, that you found or whatever the fuck. Whatever. So I'm scrolling and it wasn't in the right folder that I supposed to have had it in. And my boss walked past and, you know, he kind of stopped. I was like, mind you, I got this big ass phone. So it's just... He looking all over like I said, wait a minute, bro. <laughs> I'm embarrassed a little bit, but he kinda looked at me like <laughs> we fam, so it is what it is. I was like, okay, girl, so come on. But anyway, that was my little moment today at work. I was like, oh shit. But um, uh, let me get to this review. Oh, I just fucked my hair up. I am so not used to having, you know, long, long like I'm used to having long hair, but I used to put it up in a ponytail or some shit like that. I'm not used to letting it drape like this. So it's kind of, you know, it's been giving me the motions all day. I've been flipping it and shit like I'm somebody. But you know, it is what it is. But um, anyway, make me feel all grand and shit. But um, anyway, Love and Hip Hop. It starts off where it left off last week with Cardi B and Yerma getting into it. Cardi B fuck Yerma up, okay? I mean, it really wasn't no punches really thrown. Okay, yeah, she beat that bitch head in a little bit from what we initially saw, but mostly it was hair pulling, and Cardi B fucked her hair up, okay, I was like, Yerma, did you pinch her, because Cardi, her little weave, her braid didn't even come down, I mean, you probably maybe shifted it a little bit, but when she got up in that goddamn car, it looked like ain't nobody touched that bitch, I said, what the fuck, so they go take her out, put her in the car, you know, Cardi is hype. She was like, get me out this motherfucking car. Get me out this car. And then she bust the motherfucking window. Now, we know Love and Hip Hop and the whole damn franchise is fake as fuck. We all know that. But at that moment, for some reason, the way that she was doing that car and she broke that window out, that felt like a real thing right then and there because she was over it. I don't give a fuck if you're faking it or not. Bitch, if we get into a fight and somebody put their hands on me, the script has been, uh-uh. I'm going off script and I'm fucking somebody up, okay? That's what it felt like to me. Then you got Yerma. <laughs> Who the fuck is that bitch? You got this bitch coming up in here with you. You need to control your hoes. And it seems like something that's been going on forever. You know I don't be the type of bitch to be trying to fuck with these other bitches. Now I got to worry about who you fucking and who you bringing home and what you bringing home to me. Bitch, no, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. He was like, you know what, Yerma? I would never, ever want to put you in a situation like that. And I was like, but nigga, you just did. <laughs> but I love you, girl. I'm sitting here like, self, shut it up. Yerma, you dumb as fuck. I mean, fuck, you can fuck this bitch up. Fuck his ass up, too. I don't know where our relationship's going to go right now. He brought his hoe. Or he had one of his hoes come up into the damn place in front of your face and then y'all got into a fight. Bitch, end that shit, okay? All your suspicions and concerns were fucking validated and confirmed, okay? Therefore, end that shit and move the fuck on. Then we got, listen, Lexi and Arsenio, all right? Two Wan Fu, Noxima Jackson, thanks for everything, Two Wan Fu, Julie Newmar. Who's... Who's Julie Newmark? <laughs> you know, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> Let me tell y'all a story about that movie. Gonna put this in here. I don't give a fuck who see it because I know some of my family watch this stuff. So the first time I ever seen Two Wine Fool, my daddy had the tape. Mm -hmm. I don't live with him, never live with him. But my daddy is slight homophobic, okay? He slight homophobic and slight racist, all right? And I was just a little bit confused because he had these little slicks marks about, you know, 
um, you know, people being gay and all that shit, you know, so that's probably one reason why I never really fuck with him like that, because I know how he feel. But I was just confused as to why that tape was in his possession, because we got the tape from him. And if you ever seen Two Wine Fool, you know what that tape, mm, okay, you know, so I be sitting here looking like, mm-hmm. What's your tea, bitch? But anyway, fuck all that. Fuck that nigga. But, um, <laughs> Lexi come up in there. Here go, uh, here go, here go Mo. So last time, you know, um, Ra said she ain't want to work with us no more. And I was like, okay, oh, well, bye, bitch. You ain't done shit else for us anyway. Lexi like, so, um, Ra, I wanted to talk to, uh, Mo because even though we fired Ra or whatever, you know, I still hired her on to continue what she did with the, um, single release stuff. And now I got to break that shit to, um, uh, uh, Lexi, to Mo. Bitch, I know what it is. Lexi in a confessional, she do give you a rough and tough, hard, I've been struggling all my life. Underneath all this makeup is 10 years of scars because I've been cut up with a whole bunch of razor blades because I've been in 15 fights. You know what I'm saying? Been busted in the head with a Coke bottle or some shit like that. That's what she give you in a confessional. And then, you know, her neck is always covered up. So I'm a little bit concerned because when she came in to meet up with um, Mo, she also had a choke on her neck. And I'm sitting here like, bitch, who the fuck and what the fuck is you trying to hide from us? All right. Is there a little Adam's apple or something going on underneath there? I was a little confused. And then she had the braids on and all that motherfucking makeup on her face and then she was giving me the male version of Ashanti she was giving me the boy version of Ashanti but you know they sitting down there talking and all that stuff and Ra uh, Mo was like <laughs> hey girl how you doing she was like bitch let me tell you this um so why you so good why you so oh, happy and stuff cause boom my man back and I can't wait and all that shit I was like who Cisco? Okay, that ain't your man, bitch. You just an appetizer on the plate, and you that you the garnish. You the dirty garnish that don't nobody eat. I'm just saying, okay. You know, sometimes you eat that shit, and sometimes the one that's unedible and it's just there for decoration. You the one that's there for decoration that get all type of fucked up and look all type of disgusting at the end of the plate. You know, that's how you look. That's how you are. So. She all happy about that, and then Lexi dropped the bomb like, "So Ross still on to do our single release party." Of course, Mo ain't really feeling that. So then we get to this scene with, you know, Rich and his daughter. Take her out to dinner or whatever. It was like, these meals is expensive. And what you got for me? It was like, you can't have this. You can't have that. Um, I need to go shopping. You know, being a dad, having this dad moment going on and being daddy daycare for full time, it's, it's, it's an experience, and I'm kind of liking it. But, you know, teenagers, they ain't going to do nothing but always on their phone, always want to go to the store. Like, goddamn, bitch, put your phone down. That was rich, okay? So then, here come Ashley, like, girl, look, let me tell you something, Dick. I got a surprise for you. It was like, what, you want to see my surprise? And then she put, pulls up her shirt, and it's a goddamn belly ring. I said, bitch, he said, who told you to do that? I'm 16 years old. I can do what I want. And I was like, all right, then go get your ass to motherfucking place. Bitch, I ain't get my tattoo until I was 18 years old. Because I was still living in my house with my mama. Because at that moment in time, she can't tell me shit. But, bitch, I would never dare to go get a piercing, get a tag, get none of that stuff. Because I know how my mama is. And, obviously, she was just trying to break the rules and, you know, see how far she can go with him. Because you the cool dad. Mama's a strict bitch. And he was like, now I'm going to have to discipline your ass. I was like, yeah, right, Rich. So, Mariah Lynn kind of over the fact that, you know, DJ Self had his hoes up in there fighting at her birthday party. Bitch, I be over that shit, too. So, she invite, you know, Cardi B to come over there, and they come talking and having lunch or whatever, and they talking about the whole situation, right? And, apparently, Cardi B and Mariah Lynn, they kind of cool. You know, they probably click buddies and all that shit. Here go Mariah Lynn. You know, we was at the party, and then that go DJ Self, and they got all this bullshit going on, but then that go Rich, and I can't deny that it's the chemistry and stuff that's between us, and I want to still get up on that. I said, bitch, shut up. Bitch, shut up. I don't have time for this. I don't. You for each and everybody, okay? You really are. Whoever's going to try to get you a fucking hit, bitch, and it still ain't happened. But once upon a time, not too long ago, I was a hoe, but I admit it, though. Listen, y'all, I hate it, but I like it. I hate it, but I fucking like it. And I'm mad at myself for liking it. Okay? I'm telling you, it's the goddamn beat. Ugh. I don't promote ratchetry and all that stuff. Well, let me stop playing. I send my... Mm, I want... 
Mm, shut up. I'm going to move on. Girl, I was about to go down to the decimal points of how much of the registry that I promote. But, bitch, you know, these reviews is ratchet as fuck. So, hey, it is what it is. Um, So, Cardi talking to her, trying to tell her what's happening. And like I said in the last review, Cardi didn't come there trying to come and get at um Yerma. Okay, Yerma the one that stood up and was rude as fuck first for everybody that was trying to say, you know, that it was Cardi that started. No, she was talking to DJ Cell. Yerma got up and got up in that bitch face and started popping off her guns. And, you know, she didn't see what was going to come happen happen next and Cardi just fucked the bitch up and you know basically Mariah Lynn was trying to tell Cardi that you know maybe you really like him she was like ain't no bitch finna put her hands on me ain't no man finna put their hands on me not no man not my nigga not no bitch I said Cardi shut up okay and she was basically like girl you like him you probably got some more feelings for him and I was like I don't see what I just don't see what Car listen Cardi trash herself okay she admitted, you know, we all know this shit, but I just don't see what it is that she see in DJ Cell. It can't be, really be all the money because he don't, he look like he got something, but not that much. Okay. Not that much like you're trying to portray and act like you do, but I just don't see it. He's corny as fuck. Maybe the dick game good. Okay. I, I mean, I don't know nothing about that. Don't need to know, but, um, maybe that's what it is. I just, I was just a little confused because I'm like, girl, you can do better. I'm pretty sure your nigga in jail probably, but then again, he's in jail. So what can you do? But anyway, moving on from that, we get to scene with Mo coming up to Cisco. Cisco was like, you know, I've been gone for a minute, doing a lot of self-evaluation. And then I come back with my hair strong and all this stuff. And I see this bitch on Roz on Instagram and I'm like, damn, she look good as fuck. Now I got to come up in here and slide through little mama stuff. And I'm sitting here like, who the fuck are you talking about? Because you damn sure ain't talking about Mo from bum bitches on deck, bitch. Okay. I was sitting here like, do you see what we see? And I mean, I ain't the flashing. I ain't even close to it. I ain't going to say that. But bitch, you know, my eyes. Opposite attracts. Okay. That does happen. People got their preference, you know, and Sometimes it ain't all the way about looks, but the bitch ain't got the personality to take up for the looks too. You know, you have to have either or or both and she has neither. I'm just saying. So was you really, I mean, Cisco, you just really looking thirsty to want to hit. Talk about something. She coming back in town. I thought you was going to work with me. I thought you was going to work with me and all this stuff. Or you just want some ass and you just saw all of this and you fell for it. I'm going to let you meet Lexi and then meet my parents. And she was like, uh, uh, what? Bitch, I'm just trying to fuck. That's all it is, all right? He was like, okay, and let you see my little poppy chulo. I said, bitch, say that one more time because I would be offended. I would be offended because it's coming out of his mouth. Mo's. So then we get this dramatic ass scene, okay? Miracle then brought her ass up from Memphis. Bitch, I thought you was up in the Dominican Republic doing God's missionary work. What happened? Who derailed your train? But um, she was like, I mean, you can tell that she's being an overprotective mother and she's one of those holy roller type of mothers or whatever that it's all about religion because she was kind of pissed that her baby ain't been going to church ever since she's been, you know, up here in New York with Rich, whatever, and feeling like Rich is letting her get away with doing anything because this dumb fool gonna post on damn Instagram the fact that she didn't got the goddamn belly ring. I said, girl, you brought this shit on yourself. I can't even go in that hard on Miracle because Miracle ain't doing nothing but being a motherfucking concerned mama, okay? And I was like... Miracle was just over. She was like, yes, I'm coming up here and I'm getting my daughter. Why? Because she's up here on Instagram putting all this stuff and she ain't been to church in a long time ever since she be up here. And I was like, that Memphis finna come out, Rich. You better step the fuck back before you get your ass fucked up. But um, anyway, she was just over it. Of course, you know, little Ashley gonna have a little attitude. Rich feels the way, oh, so now you want to take her back and you want to do this? Well, Rich, you are kind of lackadaisical in your fucking parenting, okay? It's because you haven't been around this child and you don't know how to parent a child, okay? You have to put your foot down. You don't have to be as strict, but you also have to put it down that there are rules and there will be consequences to those rules if you dis disrupt them or, you know, disobey them. And the way that Rich was going off, I felt the type of way because I'm like, 
well, damn, do you do this for your other kids? Because according to some of your baby mamas, like, bitch, when you came out there talking about some, you pay a whole bunch of money a week to child support to all your baby mamas and stuff. One of your baby mamas came out and said, bitch, that's a fucking lie. And I was like, oops, I knew somebody was going to pop up. This was doing a reunion for Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. I meant to say that. But, um, you know, some of them baby mamas been coming out the woodwork saying that rich ain't shit. I kind of believe it, too, you know. But, hey, it is what it is. So then we get this scene with, you know, Mariah Lynn going over there to see Cisco. She was like, I know Rich and Cisco are friends, but I'm going to be out of here without him. Like, fuck him because he taking all day just to get my record done. And I'm like, I ain't got time to deal with his bullshit. I'm going to go talk to Cisco and get this shit done on myself. And I was like, all right, Cisco looking. So what's up? Now, Cisco has this way of talking to these bitches like he finna fuck them. And no matter what it is, it can be business, it can be pleasure, it can be he just woke up, bitch, he will talk to you like he's about to fuck you and he'll look you in your face and do it too. Just like this. So what's up? All right, all right. So you know my boy Rich, right? Okay, okay. So what you been doing? Like, tell me your history. Okay, okay, I feel you on that because, you know, I had all this stuff going on too. You know, my mama abandoned me when I was 12 years old. And, you know, I had to think for myself, and it made me have a whole bunch of issues. And I'm like, so we vibing and we connecting on that shit right there. That's how sis old talks to that bitch. And she's sitting there like, oh, okay, you know, we can do some things. You know, we can do some things and do some things after we do some things. I was like, Mariah, shut it up because we know you're going to try to fuck. And then we get DJ Self call himself feeling bad about the shit that happened between him, Yarma, and Cardi saying basically everybody deserves an apology. You fucking think, bitch? You know? So she goes up, he goes up into the studio and Cardi, I think, was in there with Migos. Girl, let me tell y'all something. I, after all this time that the Migos been out, I've heard one song and I only heard one song recently. Yeah, it was that Versace, Versace, Versace. I heard that, and that's the only thing that I've ever heard of that shit was that line, Versace, Versace, Versace. Okay, fine. I actually heard a full song a couple of days ago, and the only reason why, and I seen how they look because I had to watch the video to hear the song, and the only reason why that happened is because somebody that, you know, I like was in the video. I found out that, you know, I fuck with was in the video. And I was like, oh, okay, this is them. I don't get the hype, but all right, whatever. Very, very mediocre, if you ask me. Below below grade mediocre. But, you know, hey, y'all like that shit. Bitch, I could be part of the group. Look at my hair. But um, anyway, no, I'm probably too late. Anyway, it'll cut off the balance and stuff, shit like that. I don't know. Somebody going to be on a comment. Oh, what was that comment about? Girl, shut up. Just shut up and take a goddamn joke, bitch. But um, anyway... So he like, you know, I apologize for what's going on. Look, you hurt me, Sal. Look, I know you was dealing with other bitches, but it's the fact that you be all up in my face and then you be lying and all that stuff and you be doing this and doing that. Because if a bitch had beef with me, she got beef with me forever. Bitch, I die. I die. Every time, I don't give a fuck. It's getting old, but every time I see it, I fucking, I fucking laugh. And she was like, basically, if you want to continue a relationship, we can do business, we can do this. Don't ever bring no bitch in the club with you because they do hosting and stuff together. And she was, he was like, I mean, she said, don't call me. Don't be asking me to do this. Don't be trying to talk to me about your personal life when you get lonely and all this stuff. Don't do none of that stuff with me, self. I don't need that because you hurt my heart. And I was like, Cardi, bitch, you don't have feelings for the side, nigga. You tripping, okay? You fucking tripping. You, you're crossing that line, okay? You're doing that shit to yourself. And then she talking, he was like, we gonna be best friend. And she lick her hand and they, I'm like, girl, what the fuck is going on here? This is trash. So, Cisco invites Mariah over for a damn candlelight visual-ass dinner on the damn balcony, trying to get to know her better. Bitch, when she come to the door, she got her arm all up on the door. She look like a little call girl hooker type of bitch. And I was like, I mean, you playing your role, so you do what you got to do. She was like, you know, I wasn't expecting all of this, but you know, Cisco know how to treat a lady. So, we starting off on a good foot. So, let me go ahead and tell you the show. So, you know, I really wasn't being honest with you. My last relationship, you know, it was with somebody in the industry and you probably know him. Who? Rich. Oh, fuck that nigga. You know, me and Rich, we ain't even on good terms like that. I don't even like to say his name because, you know, he went behind my back and tried to get with my ex. So, basically, I'm finna play tit for tat, bitch. You took mine, I'm finna take yours. And I was like, 
neither one were prizes. So I guess, you know, I guess the code was broken. So you feeling some type of way, holding grudges and shit. But all right. And neither one of y'all with neither one of them hoes. Probably don't even talk to him no more. But okay, you know, you do what you got to do. And he was like, I don't give a fuck, bitch. We talking about me and you. And they go, look look at this view. Look at this view. I mean, it's nice and all. You know, it's just glistening. Look at the lights flickering and stuff. Oh, my God. Is that a time bomb right there? Oh, I've never seen one. You know, you really cute. Cisco, fine as hell. I said, bitch, where? Okay. And he was like, you know, you look good too. You, you you look, I can get closer to you. You know, let me meet you halfway. And he was like, your eyes, they look so cute. And let me look at them. Like, can I look at them closer? He looked at them closer and kissed her. And I said, bitch, we saw that shit coming. That, Cisco, just say you want to fuck and get that shit over with. Quit throwing out these corny ass lines. Use a corny ass dude with these corny ass lines. Stop it, bitch. Then we get to see with um, DJ Self, another corny motherfucker. He got his radio show going, and he got the Migos up there. So his way of getting back with Irma and apologizing is putting himself on blast. So that's basically what he did. Have her picked up and had the driver turn to his radio station and basically put himself on blast, said that he was fucking around with two bitches or whatever, and that Yerma is really his girlfriend, and that he cut it off with Cardi B and all that stuff. And then she come out there. He come out there talking to her, you know, for him to do this. It's just like... I just knew, so I just don't under like are you really for real self like are you really for real like because I really do love you and I don't want uh, tissue 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 I'm just like if y'all don't get the fuck out of here with this bullshit I don't have time so it's time for BBOD and they little single release party and all that stuff Rashida's still on deck Rashida chummy with the goddamn bitch that don't like her daddy and stuff he like girl you did what you had to do on this one and it's cute and I like this and all this stuff and Rashida like this bitch gonna see that yeah you needed a bitch like me on the team cause this motherfucker is lit I said whatever bitch you talking y'all hyping this shit up like we really give a fuck and bitch for the single top of delicious bitch what so they get up there on the motherfucking stage. First of all, get into their intro when they was walking in. Okay, they was walking in like they was about to get ready to be waiting on their name to be called for the next performance on the RuPaul Drag Show or some shit like that, bitch. I was like, all right, you know, whatever floats your boat. Mm -mm. Okay, so she they get on stage. Da da delicious, da da delicious. That bitch don't do no dishes. But she do the niggas. That the delicious. That the delicious. I did that. I said, bitch, what? And then it just sounds so horrible because you got Lexi coming in in the background repeating everything that was said like she's the hype man of the group. And it's trash as fuck. Mariah Lynn brings her ass up in there. Mind you, Cisco that too. Mariah Lynn brings her ass up in there. She was like, the last time that I seen BBOD was at the Cypher. And I must admit, they got some flow, but these lyrics? Mm -mm. I was like, girl, I agree. The lyrics are trash. But bitch, who the fuck are you to call somebody lyrics trash? Because you on the same fucking boat. But you sound way better than these hoes, okay? And then next thing you know, after the performance... Cisco and Mo talking. Mo was like, so you didn't come home? You came home late last night. He was like, you know, I told you I was in the studio and all this stuff. Mariah shows up. He like, damn, I didn't even know she was going to be here and all this stuff. And then they get to talking. He was like, so you know him? Yeah, we working together and we know we kind of hooked up and all this stuff. And I was just like, Mariah, tread lightly because that's a big bitch in front of you. That's a big bitch, all right? You know, bitches go after the other chick instead of the nigga. That's what I'm just saying. And, you know, Mo gets into her fucking feelings because she figured the shit out like this motherfucker is playing you. I was like, yeah, look at you. You should have known. So, basically, you know, she gets in, Mo gets in her feelings. Mariah trying to tell her that she asked this girl was she with somebody and she said no and... Basically, she was like, you know, both you bitches can get out. You know, I ain't the one. And that's when Mariah got pissed off and they was about to get into it. And she was like, security can get y'all both out and all this stuff. And I'm just like, okay, whatever. Who cares? Um, Next week, Cisco and Mariah still going to be fucking with each other. We finally see Bianca again. Bitch, Yandy suggested Bianca go see uh, uh Tara for the etiquette class. Bitch, I would not take no classes from that hoe. I will not take no classes from that delusional motherfucker. Girl, I will not. I just will not. 
I'm assuming that Amina didn't get an abortion, okay? And then the big blow up between BBOD happened. Child, y'all tell me how y'all feel about this episode. I'm about to go watch the breaks. Peace.